the American College of Pediatricians, ACPEDS, has made a fervent appeal to major medical associations, urging them to stop endorsing gender transition treatments for minors. These treatments encompass social affirmation, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries. This urgent plea is supported by numerous healthcare experts who highlight the potential physical and mental health risks tied to these practices. Don't miss, what are the main concerns of AXPEDS regarding current protocols for minors expressing discomfort with their biological sex? Which medical organizations are called out by ACPEDS for promoting harmful gender procedures for minors? What does ACPEDS suggest as an alternative approach to handling gender dysphoria in minors? And we have serious concerns about the physical and mental health effects. We have serious concerns about the physical and mental health effects. This message is infused with profound compassion and genuine worries for the welfare of our children and teenagers. It highlights the protective stance that current medical practices might endanger their physical and mental health. These heartfelt concerns are the essence of this declaration. Of the current protocols promoted for the care of children and adolescents in the United States who express discomfort with their biological sex. This declaration was authored by the American College of Pediatricians, but really it was developed from the expertise of hundreds of doctors, researchers, and other healthcare workers and leaders who for years have been sounding the alarm. This declaration was authored by the American College of Pediatricians, but really it was developed from the expertise of hundreds of doctors, researchers, and other healthcare workers and leaders who for years have been sounding the alarm. The combined focus and unwavering efforts of a vast, diverse assembly of experts. This declaration embodies unity and a shared sense of duty among those who have tirelessly championed change, showcasing that this viewpoint is bolstered by a wealth of knowledge and experience. On the harmful protocols that continue to be promoted by the medical organizations in the United States. Despite recent revelations from the leaked WPATH files and the recent release of the final report from the CAST review, these medical organizations have not changed course. So we are calling on these medical organizations of the United States, including the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Endocrine Society, the Pediatric Endocrine Society, the American Medical Association, the American Psychological Association, and the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, to follow the science and their European colleagues. We are calling on these medical organizations of the United States to follow the science and their European colleagues. Imagine a healthcare system driven by reason and rooted in scientific evidence, one that truly resonates with our deepest concerns and hopes. The current U.S. protocols fall short of the global standards we desperately need. We must demand practices that are more rigorous, more compassionate, and undeniably in tune with the finest scientific benchmarks. Our health, our future, deserves nothing less. And immediately stop the promotion of social affirmation, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries for, sur for children and adolescents who experience distress over their biological sex. In our declaration, we affirm that sex is a dimorphic, innate trait. In our declaration, we affirm that sex is a dimorphic, innate trait. Embracing the profound truth of biological sex is essential for compassionate and effective health care. Recognizing and respecting these biological realities is crucial in medical practice, ensuring that care is both accurate and empathetic. Defined in relation to an organism's biological role in reproduction, male and female. This genetic signature is present in every nucleated somatic cell in the body and is not altered by drugs or surgical interventions. Consideration of these innate differences is critical to the practice of good medicine and to the development of sound policy for children and adults alike. Consideration of these innate differences is critical to the practice of good medicine and to the development of sound policy for children and adults alike. Acknowledging and respecting biological differences is vital for providing high quality medical care and creating effective policies. Overlooking these differences can lead to misunderstandings and potentially dangerous outcomes, undermining the very essence of personalized health care. Medical decision-making should be based upon an individual's biological sex. It should respect biological reality and the dignity of the person by compassionately addressing the whole person. Decision-making should be based upon an individual's biological sex. 
it should respect biological reality and the dignity of the person by compassionately addressing the whole person. Embracing a compassionate and comprehensive medical approach, this philosophy honors the intricate tapestry of biological truths and the profound dignity of each individual. It champions medical decisions that celebrate personal identity and holistic well-being, standing as a beacon of respect and humanity in treatment. We are here defying the claims made by these medical organizations in the U.S. that those of us who are concerned are a minority and that their protocols are consensus. They are not consensus, and we are speaking in a loud, unified voice, enough. We are here defying the claims made by these medical organizations in the U.S., that those of us who are concerned are a minority and that their protocols are consensus. They are not consensus, and we are speaking in a loud, unified voice enough. There's an unyielding sense of unity and resolve among those who champion change. This movement defies the notion that their worries are insignificant. Instead, it represents a vast and outspoken resistance to the existing norms. It powerfully calls for solidarity and collective action against the spread of misinformation. The American College of Pediatricians, ACPEDS, has released a forceful declaration urging the cessation of practices such as social affirmation, puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries for children and adolescents with gender dysphoria. This statement, termed the Doctors Protecting Children Declaration, raises significant concerns about the physical and mental health impacts of these treatments. Dr. Jill Simons of ACPEDS stressed that the declaration embodies the expertise and worries of hundreds of healthcare professionals who have long cautioned against the harmful protocols endorsed by leading U.S. medical organizations, including the American Academy of Pediatrics and the American Medical Association. Despite new evidence from European studies and recent reports highlighting the risks associated with these practices, these organizations have not updated their guidelines. ACPEDS maintains that sex is a biological characteristic defined by reproductive roles, unchangeable by drugs or surgery. They argue that medical decisions should be grounded in biological sex, with thorough evaluations to identify and address underlying psychological conditions often linked to gender dysphoria. The declaration urges U.S. medical organizations to align with their European counterparts and stop promoting gender transition procedures for minors, advocating for evidence-based approaches instead. This stance challenges the consensus claimed by these organizations, pushing for a policy shift to safeguard the health and well-being of children. When it comes to addressing major medical institutions and their gender-affirming practices, the ACPEDS have voiced significant concerns. They argue that an institution's ideological bias can skew medical recommendations, potentially leading to harmful practices. These concerns reflect a broader worry about the politicization of science and medicine, highlighting the necessity for an evidence-based, objective approach to healthcare. It is vital to make informed and responsible decisions about healthcare interventions for minors. Measures such as social affirmation or medical treatment should prioritize authenticity and the long-term well-being of the individual. Children and adolescents, still in the midst of their development, might not yet possess the capacity to make life-altering decisions about their identity and future health. This underscores the need for careful consideration and guidance rooted in biological realities. ACPEDS places strong emphasis on the biological and diverse nature of sex, advocating that social and medical practices should align with these realities. They stress the importance of maintaining a stable and objective framework for understanding human biology, arguing that sex is an immutable characteristic present in every cell of the body. This perspective prioritizes biological facts over subjective feelings. The potential long-term psychological and physical effects of gender-affirming therapy on minors are a key concern. The use of puberty blockers, cross-sex hormones, and surgeries warrants a comprehensive assessment to weigh the risks and intended benefits and to address any underlying psychological conditions that accompany a sense of gender incompatibility. ACPED's advocates for treatments that promote mental health and stability, emphasizing the need for a cautious approach. Moreover, the role of the media in shaping public perception and medical practices cannot be ignored. Media promotion of gender-affirming therapy for minors can contribute to social acceptance and pressure on medical institutions. It is crucial to ensure that media narratives do not overshadow the genuine needs and happiness of children and adolescents. The moral and ethical implications of providing gender-affirming therapy to minors must also be considered. 
Medical decisions should be based on rigorous research and ethical responsibilities aiming to do no harm. Treating individuals holistically considering both psychological and biological factors is essential in the decision-making process. What do you think?